So the word of God written on my visiting card was this Romans 8.31. That is, if God is, if God is for us, who can be against us? And it so happened, so whenever I go to meet anybody, uh, when I offer, I am a chief engineer of so and so, and this is my card, and then they start looking, what? God is for us? God is for us. God is in the temple. God is in the church. What is this? Then that makes me to evangelize. <laughs> I started explaining. Anyway, this become my whole obsession. Obsession. That in my mind, my thinking, always I remember this word. One word. If God is for us, who can be against us? Any obstructions, any problem comes. If God is for us, who can be against us? So in such a situation, before my evangelizing life started, I was in one of the factory. So there was a man who came begging for a job. He has a family, he has no job. So I told him, okay, I will engage you for a daily labor. You can work. But after a couple of days, I came to know he was a murderer. He wanted to hide inside this factory. So the security of that factory told this fellow is in search, the police in search of him. He is absconding, he is hiding inside the factory. So you have to, you cannot employ him. He is a very terrible person. Okay, so I told him slowly, my dear, now I have given you a few days work. Now that is enough, now I don't have much work. So this is your salary, you can go and search work somewhere else. Now he became angry. He started shouting at me and he wanted to beat me. And then some of my workers came and pulled him away. And he was sent out of the gate. That day when I was taking rest in the guest house of the factory, so after lunch I take a little nap. So it's a guest house. I did not lock the door. Suddenly I heard a voice, somebody came inside my room. And then I turned I saw this man with a big knife standing there and he's telling me, now I will cut you to pieces. Who is there for you now to help you? So in the morning there were so many people to help. Who is there for you? At first I thought it is a dream. <laughs> no, it's not a dream. Really he's standing there fully drunk and with a big knife to kill me. Oh God, my life ended. Oh God, what will I do? Now he is going to kill me. My wife and my children, oh God, what to do? When I was so desperately thinking, I hear a voice. A voice from me, if God is for you, who can be against you? <sighs> Suddenly I am getting such a power and he is keep on asking, who is there with you? Who is there with you now? I will cut you to pieces. I will cut you to pieces. Who is with you? Suddenly I said, God is with me. God is with me. And who is with you? The devil is with you. God is with me. And I got up as if I'm going to give him a hit, but I have nothing in my hand. <laughs> he has a big knife. And when I said, so he kept on, he came forward to attack me. At that time, I just said, if God is for me, who can be against me? Ah! This man 
fell back as if a bullet hit him when i said if god is with me who can be against me when i said this the power of the word of god hit him and he came like this now i got encouragement i again said if god is with me who can be against me again he fell back and the third time when i said he fell down he fell down and he began to cry and said forgive me i'm sorry don't call police please forgive me he felt into repentance that is he a deliverance took place the devil in him left him so the word of god is so powerful it has power to raise the dead it has power to deliver the situation it has power to strengthen our life so that is the religious life and in my beginning uh, this was my testimony everywhere i it's a, it's such a powerful testimony it was and i could experience the power of the word of god in so many situations there are mighty healings one say convent sister a nun from uh, uh, it happened in patna in one of the big retreat which was preached by father matthew naik ambrambil and team so i was with them but i was sitting and and uh, adoring the lord interceding for the retreat but in that intercession chamber in that adoration room chapel um sister she is actually from austria <laughs> so later on when i came to austria i met her relatives and all this sister was limping like this because her one foot one one leg has some defect and the lord told me you pray for the sister i will elongate her bones and heal her so i told the sister sister the lord is going to do a wonder for you you are what is your problem oh thomas forget i am last 40 years i am like this i don't know i went to so many doctors nothing is happening i said today the lord is going to heal you your problem is your one leg is short therefore all the weight is going on the other leg so you are being limping now the lord is going to elongate your leg what who i cannot believe this don't worry i believe it i believe it thomas help my unbelief i said you sit down because the lord is now decided he is going to do it so i got such a confidence i got such a power i got such a strength and as i began to pray oh holy spirit oh jesus you said it it will be done and as i began to pray the lord said you command to the bones it will along it and as i touch on her foot the leg started along it the bone started along it she was feeling so terrible pain and as the bones along it and when it came both same the lord said now say stop i said in the name of jesus stop stop can you imagine this i have seen with my own eyes and i felt with my own hands so many such miracles god is doing and that make our confidence our faith in the word of god because jesus said in luke mark chapter mark chapter 16 17 he says believers have these signs these signs they will lay hands over the sick 
and the sick will be healed. I believe, I say I am not a healer. I am not a healer, but I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer and Jesus said this, that a believer has these signs, will accompany him, he will lay hands over the sick and the sick will be healed. Say everybody. They will lay hands over the sick, come on. They, and the sick will be, will be healed. So, so many occasions this has happened. So our faith, first of all, my faith is not only that God is in me, but also the word, the word of Christ is important. The whole Bible is word of God, but what Christ spoken is different. It is different. He is the incarnate word. He is incarnate word. In his incarnate personality, all human being is in him. So every word what he speaks has a more different power more different power. So that is why we have scripture reading in the ministry of the word. We have Old Testament reading, New Testament reading, but when it comes to the New Testament, New Testament, the priest is coming with the gospel in a procession with the candle angels around and with incense and he says, so he brings the word, keeping the word on his mouth. Mouth. This is the mouth of God. In other oriental churches, like Byzantine liturgy, the priest will say, Wisdom be attentive before the gospel. In Greek Catholics, they say, Sophia or So, the word of Christ must be our focus as a priest or a religious. And you have to find out in your weaknesses, suppose you have difficulties, your problems, suppose you have a problem with the relationship with your family. So, I tell you a, a, a word of God. Luke chapter 18. Say so Luke chapter 18, 29. Luke chapter 18, 29, which says that for the sake of the kingdom of God, Luke chapter 18. I mean, I said to you, there is no one who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive back an overabound return in this present age and eternal life in the age to come. So in the religious life, when we are called for the kingdom of God, now look at, I am here, my wife is in my home. For the sake of the kingdom of God, I have left my wife and my children, everything. There are situations, of course, my life accepts this situation because she understands I am called by God for a special work. So, she accompanied me wherever possible. Now it is not possible, so she don't accompany me. But, but for me, my wife and my children, they are all from God. But what I must focus is what God wants me to do. So it will indirectly bring blessing for my wife and my children. Because I am doing the work and the will of God. So you who are called for God, for the work of God, 
you must find out what word of god you have to hold on your life is in which word of god particularly those who are called for priesthood or religious you have to abandon your wife sorry your family abandon means god has chosen you for his work so naturally your family will be taken care by god the lord will take care of your family if you keep on worrying worrying then that will not your faith that will weaken your 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 vocation the mar matthew chapter 6:34 6:33 everybody knows what is 6:33 seek first the kingdom of god and its righteousness rest all things will be added unto you what is 634 634 says don't worry about tomorrow 634 do not worry about tomorrow tomorrow will take care of itself sufficient for the day is its own evil so so this is particularly how can you attain this you have to find out the word of jesus word of jesus you have to be strongly united with one word one word of jesus at least one word of jesus now you search in your heart what is your most loving word of jesus what one word you mostly love or you find out what is your problem you ask the lord oh lord give me such a word so that i can hold on i think it is in the book of saint james saint james says you must hang on to a word which can hold your life adhe da mane avajanam james yeah 121 james 121 therefore put away all filth and evil excess and humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls humbly welcome one word one word of jesus which can motivate you which can strengthen you which can which is able to save your soul save your soul save your soul you know uh, monasticism began by eastern churches zero malabar or eastern churches i hope you know in the catholic church there are 23 eastern churches oriental churches like saint uh, like zero malabar a man called anthony his parents were very rich but they died he had a brother he also died so all the riches became his property he became he is a very rich man but once when he was in the holy eucharist a word of god that is luke chapter 18 a rich man came to jesus you know the story of that rich man came to jesus and said master what should i do to teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life eventually jesus said sell everything and give to the poor and follow me that word touched him sell everything give to the poor and follow me so although it is read in the gospel in the holy mass he really felt 
the lord jesus is speaking to him directly go sell everything and give to the poor and follow me maybe it happens in such a situation even in sleep or raising or every time this word will follow so he was convinced god want me to do that so he did all his wealth he sold and gave to the poor and with symbol one dress he walked into the desert desert that is the beginning of the monasticism so he is the great antony the great antony of the desert the great that is the antony of the desert see how it began and slowly slowly another people started joining with him he was living in the desert without anything in his hand living in providence if somebody gives something to eat he eats otherwise no and there was another great man his name was saint macarius he is another desert father macarius joined with him and they began to have a many others so antony of egypt is a layman like us he was not a religious he was not a priest he began like this and macarius joined with him then only saint basil and saint gregory of nazianzus they all understood there is a way of christian life like this in complete asceticism and believing exactly what the word jesus said and to to live a poor life a chaste life and obedient life completely that is then saint basil is the one who wrote a rule for the monasticism so monasticism began from the eastern church later on when saint augustine was converted and when he became a priest he was fascinated by the saint anthony and macarius and then he started another monastery in the western church that is the monastery of saint augustinians so what i wanted to say what was what was what was the power behind this beginning of the monasticism which brought such a big area of newness in the church that was one word one word sell everything give to the poor you will have riches in heaven that word touched saint anthony of desert egypt that made him the father of monasticism the father of monasticism and he lived that word god gave him that that power to live that word you know when i left a very good salary to work i was having very good salary the lord said leave everything and follow me yes and i had my wife was not working my little children but i asked the lord how the, how how i will live how my family will live and the lord said look at the birds of the sky are you not greater than the birds i said yes then my father who care for the birds will also care for you i believed it i were bet and believed it now 33 years i am living without any salary without any remuneration 
without any pocket money without any stipends god provide me like the birds of the sky and not only me and my family i have so many team members <laughs> so many team members in different countries so many activities television channel animation film project so many other projects everything is going on in the providence of the lord because i believe this one day in my family where i am staying we have i am staying in a flat in ernakulam i have we have two flats in another flat is the all our ministry team members were staying there were about 26 people in the other flat they are prayer warriors like so one day morning uh, one day evening my the the kitchen department girl came and said brother there is nothing for tomorrow morning for breakfast huh? it's already 7 o'clock in the evening i checked in my purse there was no money in my purse oh my god you should have told me little early anyway i said oh god what will happen tomorrow the lord reminded me the word before i feed to the birds i will feed you all right okay yes i got the answer you can go and sleep the lord will do it so my point is the word of jesus when he says it happens it happens when he says when i hear when i believe it happens and next day morning <laughs> we get up at uh, we go out for the holy mass at 6 o'clock around 6:30 is the holy mass the other flat girl came and asked whether somebody has come here with a big basket full of banana and bread but this is first time why should he come shall we send him away no 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 what did yesterday the lord said the lord said before i feed the birds of the sky i will feed you who is that man call him who is that then i told him who are you who sent you here so he gave me a visiting card i understood okay don't worry thank you keep it inside and we go to the mass and afterwards i came and called this person i said how you got this idea or this inspiration to send this food because i wanted to know because exactly so he said he and his wife was in the shopping around 7 o'clock in the evening and my his wife said shall we send some bread and banana to brothers ministry so that they can have a change in the breakfast all right he did that i said what time it was around 7 o'clock that was the time the lord told me <laughs> like the so i have seen every day such miracles i want to say because i believe in that word which word look at the birds of the sky if god provide for them are you not greater than those birds even in my some of the adoration centers in austria when i am there it happens one day so there are some indian ladies also along with the austrian so they wanted to cook some indian food for me so the indian ladies told to the austrians who goes for the marketing he said can you buy some eggs maybe we will make a indian egg curry <laughs> indian egg curry with masala and all you know with a little spicy since i am there they wanted to make but this uh, austrians forgot that they forgot 
when so the Indian ladies cut onions and <laughs> ready to cook the making the spicy egg curry. My water, my mouth is getting watery. <laughs> Thinking about the spicy egg curry. They cut onions and everything ready, but the eggs did not come. <laughs> the Austrian lady said, sorry, and truly go, excuse me, I forgot. I said, don't worry, why are you making a fuss about it? I don't need all these things, we eat what they are eating, don't worry. Okay, but in another five minutes, another one lady who is normally coming for the adoration, it was her turn for adoration. She is coming and she brought a, a crate, a big box. Uh, so the lady in the kitchen says, what is this? These are some eggs, about 100 eggs. <laughs> a, a big box of 100 eggs. See, this is how God looks look after us. God provides for us. When we are working for God, when we are specially called by God, He, he takes care of us everything. Not only our own matters, our family, all our matters. So I want to assure you, my dear brothers and sisters, what you have to do is you have to catch what particular word as St. James wrote in 121, you have to hold on to one word. I hold on to this one word, Lord, you said it. You said to me, look at the birds of the sky. I will provide you before I provide the birds. That's it. That is my salary slip. That is my everything. <laughs> 33 years now. And I have great confidence. He said it. So he will do it. So you have to hold on to one word. One word of Christ. Which whatever area you have problem. Suppose you have weaknesses and failures. You say, oh Lord. How can I be a priest with all these weaknesses and failures? So he will tell you one word. You hold on to that word. Suppose you are worried about your family, your mother, father. Oh, my parents are alone. I am, people say you have to care for your parents. That is your responsibility. Sorry, no, no, no. Your only responsibility is to listen to God. What God, the creator, who created you, he created your parents to create you. <laughs> he created your parents to create you. One day, one lady was telling, my, she said, my daughter is asking, uh, Mommy, why you married this papa? He's such an alcoholic. You should divorce and get rid of him. Why you married him? Now this woman has no answer. So she sent me a message. See, my daughter is keep on telling like this. Diverse from my husband who is such an alcoholic. And she keep on asking, why you married him? Why you keep this marriage? What should I answer? I said, the answer is, God made this marriage to create you like a wonderful girl to create you the Lord made this marriage to produce a girl like you <laughs> that is the answer and one day a religious sister came to meet me with her father who is an alcoholic. Terrible alcoholic, terrible, atrocious. And she came from the convent 
only to bring him to me to pray for him because he makes such terrible thing in the house and the locality <laughs> once he is drunk he don't know what's happening sometimes he is running around without the cloth you don't know so imagine so the sister feels such ashamed so she started speaking so angry this man he is drunk and he run around without clothes around the home and what all the people are talking see the father of that sister and i am ashamed to go there and such like that she was shouting at him she was shouting at him and after some time i said sister please cool down cool down cool down are you happy in your religious life yes yes i am contented i feel this is really my call and i am enjoying my call as a religious i am so faithful and trustworthy i do everything according to the to the obedience and chastity and poverty i am so you are a successful religious am i right yes and you must know what jesus said jesus said every tree is known by its fruit you are the fruit of this tree your father is an alcoholic he is such a terrible alcoholic but god created a child from him a very good cross a religious system imagine she was she was touched by that she was touched by that a tree is known by its fruit and she started crying she prostrated down at his feet and said i'm sorry father i'm sorry papa i'm so sorry that i shouted at you i blamed you and she hugged him and probably first time in this life they were in hug for a long time and at that moment i prayed oh lord bless them bless this family bless this man deliver him there you go maybe i think at that moment his alcoholism left him so the power of the word of god we must understand the power of jesus word is like a fuel for our life are you happy so you must now just close your eye and think about your problem and think about one word of god what jesus is speaking to you oh jesus speak to me give me a word which which i can hold on i can hold on a word praise you jesus thank you lord come on everybody let us praise and thank god hallelujah 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 okay now be quiet and you go into the inner room you believe jesus is in you oh jesus you are the word incarnate i am in your body but now give me a word for my life for my religious vocation to strengthen my religious vocation give me a word like the antony of desert antony of egypt the word he got to us sell everything give to the poor and have treasure in heaven that made his life so also we can see everybody's life like saint francis savior laola ignatius laola told him francis even if you gain the whole world if you lose your soul 
that is the word touched him so he left his he had a, he was a professor in the university of paris he was a rich from a rich family he was a very reputed professor educationist he left everything and went in search of the soul saving souls that is the call of a priest we may have a purpose so oh, i want to be a principal i want to be a professor i want to run an english medium school that is not the basic call of a priest a priest is christ to save the souls that is our basic call okay maybe in that process god may use you something else but our basic call is to save salvation so let us focus oh lord give me a word give me a word so if not now you must in these days or in these hours in these sessions in the lord will speak to you a word that word will be like a like a, like sam 9 109 119 105 says the word is my light for my path and my guide for my way your word is a light for my path and a torch for my way angayude vajanam ende paadathinu velakkum paadayil prakashavumana okay so now i want to have another group okay shall we go for another group in this group workshop it's completely different what we are going to do is an intercession in this group prayer now everybody has certain burden certain burden suppose a burden about the family you whatever burden you have pray for all such people particularly in the area of evangelization in the area of vocation in the area of vocation so a vocation is matured not by your own your own prayer we need a lot of intercession of course the whole church is praying for you your parents are praying for you but apart from that we need to raise intercessions intercession when you have a particular situation a crisis 